success of Mega Man 9, Capcom decided to strike while the iron was hot. So in 2010, we got Mega Man 10, a game that pretty much followed the blueprint of the previous game, down to the retro graphics, controls, music, and everything. But as I recall, I think the reaction to Mega Man 10 was a little more mixed compared to Mega Man 9. Maybe the novelty of playing a retro Mega Man game had already run its course. It's going to be interesting to replay this game and see if it holds up or if it falls on its face. I'm Eugene Morris of the Brotherhood of Gaming, and this is our review of Mega Man 10. In the 21st century, we open in the home of our favorite friendly professor, Dr. Light, and we see that all is not well. Mega Man's sister, Roll, has suddenly become very ill. We find out that she's been infected by a new virus called Roboenza. Hey, honey. Yeah, babe. You're a nurse. Can I ask you something? Sure. What's Roboenza? Honey, it's the same as the T-virus. Oh, made up? Yes. Oh. Thanks, son. Mm-hmm. You know, I have to admit, playing these older games which have to do with a virus hits a little differently nowadays for obvious reasons. They just came off way more topical now than they did before. Just saying. I better move on before this video gets demonetized. So this Robowenza only affects robots, and with them shutting down, it creates a huge problem for humanity. As human beings at this time become so dependent on robots for their day-to-day -day lives that they can't function without them. So when the robots go down, society pretty much goes down with it. There's a surprising amount of social commentary here for a Mega Man game, almost like a reflection of our society, that we need machines for pretty much everything, to the point that we really can't function without them. Makes you think. Anyway, things get so bad that Mega Man's arch nemesis Dr. Wily himself arrives at their home and offers a truce as he states that his robots have been infected as well. Dr. Wily explains that he was working on a cure when an infected robot stole his research. Proto Man, Mega Man's brother, offers to help as they all must unite in order to resolve this crisis. While Mega Man and Proto Man are out battling the new batch of robot masters, Dr. Wily is able to make medicine thanks to the research that was recovered. But soon enough, Mega Man himself is infected as well. It is then revealed that the one behind the virus was none other than Dr. Wily himself. How many adventures have we had so far? What, nine, ten? Of course it's Dr. Wily. There's not a soul on this planet who didn't see this twist coming. He only helped to make the medicine for his virus to use it as leverage to get all the robots in the city to agree to work for him. Kind of ingenious if you ask me. Things are looking pretty bad when Roll offers her medicine to Mega Man, knowing that he's the only one that can stop him. With Mega Man back on his feet, he heads to Wily's castle. After storming through his fortress, Mega Man encounters Dr. Wily and takes him down. Suddenly, he realizes that the evil doctor himself has become gravely ill. Because Mega Man is a true blue hero, pun very much intended, he takes Wily to a hospital. A few days later, Wily escapes custody, but leaves behind the cure for Roboenza, supposedly as a gesture of thanks to Mega Man for saving his life. You know, of all the Mega Man stories, I think this one might actually be my favorite. Again, I like Dr. Wily's plan to take over the world, as it was creative and properly evil. It's also nice to see Roll get a true heroic moment for herself in letting Mega Man have her medicine. Not to mention all the interesting commentary in this game in regards to humans and machines and their relationship. But I'm sure I'm looking way too into this. I mean, come on, there's no way humanity would let their reliance on robots go too far. I mean, what's the worst that can happen? This time around, the Blue Bomber goes to war against Sheep Man, Pump Man, Solar Man, Chill Man, Nitro Man, Commando Man, Blade Man, and Strike Man. The gameplay style is virtually identical to that of Mega Man 9, as it presents a very old-school Mega Man experience that you received when you played the first two Mega Man games, which means no charge shot and no slide ability. I still miss some, but at this point I got used to not having them. Just like the last game, you can collect items that are both found around the stage and appear randomly after destroying enemies such as energy tanks, energy fillers, and screws that are used for currency. In between stages, you can visit the shop to spend the screws on items that can assist you throughout the adventure. I'm a simple man, so I like to load up on energy tanks. 
Speaking of help, our faithful robot dog Rush once again lends a helping hand with his Rush coil for reaching higher places and later his Rush jet for making things a little easier. And oh boy, I sure needed them because this just felt like the hardest Mega Man game yet. It is recommended that you start with Sheep Man stage first because you can more easily kill him with your Buster Cannon. But after dying more times than I want to admit, when I finally got to him, he just felt harder than your normal Stage 1 Mega Man boss. It just took longer than normal to finally take him down. Not only that, but many of the stages felt like more of a chore this time around. But you know what? Maybe that's by design. I mean, this is Mega Man's 11th adventure. Maybe after all this time, the Blue Bomber is finally becoming obsolete. Maybe these new enemies and new robots are becoming too much for him to handle. And he really has to struggle. He's really the underdog in the story. He has to overcome this new technology. Either that, I'm just really bad at Mega Man games. Either way it works. This game really loves spikes, especially in Wily's Castle, which is fun. So much fun. Then there is Commando Man Stage, which has these dust storms that push you back, usually into bottomless pits. Which is also fun. Zelda, what is it? Oh. This game has an easy mode. <laughs> I knew that. Just for the record, I never did use the easy mode in this game. I don't know, I guess my pride didn't allow me to. But that's the thing about this game. Yes, it is hard, and I did bellyache about it, but it's still entertaining enough to keep me going. I never rage quit or anything like that, I just kept slugging through it. So there was still a good amount of satisfaction when it came to beating a level. Another thing with this game is you actually have the option of playing as Proto Man. So let's check him out. Okay, he looks cool. He's got a shield. He controls well, and oh my god, my health! Okay, back to Mega Man. But then I found out that you can enter a code here on the Mega Man collection and get access to Bass. So I tried him out. I mean, I liked him in Mega Man Bass, and you know what? He's pretty cool. He can dash like Mega Man X. He can shoot in multiple directions, which is really awesome. But the best thing about him is that he can merge into his friend Treble in order to access his flying mode. For as long as it lasts, it's pretty neat. You can fly around shooting in three directions. The only thing about Bass is that his blasts are weaker, so it'll take a little longer to destroy enemies. So you have to pick your poison. In the end, personally, I stuck with the guy that got me this far. But you do have options. As far as the music goes, it is again a nice soundtrack. Here are a few ones that I enjoyed. When it comes to Mega Man games, 10 is another decent outing. While it's not one of my personal favorites, and there are other Mega Man games out there that I would visit for this one, I do think this one has one of the series' best stories with the whole virus angle. But essentially, gameplay-wise, it's pretty much a copy and paste of Mega Man 9. So if you like that game, this one will be right down your alley. From the graphics, gameplay, music, sound effects, and story, Mega Man has always been consistently good. I don't think there's a bad one. At least when it comes to the classic series. You know, it's been a few years since the last Mega Man game, and even though it's been a while, we all know he's still out there. He's still a big name over at Capcom, and we're all waiting for his next journey. And we, his loyal Mega Man fans, will be there to support him as always. 
Well, I'm Eugene Morris of the Brotherhood of Gaming. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And make sure to check out our Teespring store to see our cool TBOG merchandise. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time. And as always, keep on gaming. Thank you.